This is the story of Empress Elizabeth of Austria who visited Ireland twice in the late 1800s to fox hunt. The Empress would have ridden in a side saddle and so this is also some of the story of side saddle in Ireland. The young Elizabeth or CC as she was known married Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria at the age of 16, a marriage that thrust her into formal Habsburg court life for which she was unprepared and found unpleasant. In an act of defiance, the Empress took up smoking, riding and gymnastics during her marriage, which caused her to become a reluctant victim of gossip. In latter years, her views on marriage were forthright. She once said, one is sold as a child at 15, and one takes an oath one does not understand, but can never undo. Considered beautiful in her day, her good looks and elegant features were often credited with retaining a public interest in the Austrian court. Elizabeth's mother-in-law, the infamous Archduchess Sophie, once wrote of Sisi, quote, It is the Empress who attracts them all, for she is their joy, their idol. Lord Spencer, a former Lord Lieutenant and avid huntsman, invited Elizabeth to Ireland. Being keen on hunting, she willingly accepted, as she considered hunting and hungry to be boring. It was arranged that she should stay in Summerhill House, the home of Lord Longford in Kilcock, County Meath. As this was a private visit, she used her minor title of Countess. Captain George Bay Middleton, considered one of the best horsemen in England, acted as her horsemaster and was also rumoured to have been her lover. So Cece would have ridden in a side saddle like this. That is a style of riding which allows lady riders to sit aside a horse rather than astride a horse. Sitting aside was a socially acceptable and modest form of riding for women in long skirts. This type of saddle is credited with the Italian Catherine de' Medici from the 1500s who developed the upper pommel to allow a rider hook her right leg around the pommel, as told here by Anne Boleyn. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Your Grace. Who will you ride with? On my own, Your Grace. On your own? There's a new saddle now which allows this. But with no man to hold on to, how do you propose to stay on the horse? As you do, Your Grace. With my thighs. Away! <laughs> I think most riders would argue that you'd use a lot more than your thighs. The pommel or leaping head was introduced in the 1830s. This allowed a rider to travel at greater speeds and to jump, making it useful for riding across the countryside. She was greeted by a large crowd in Dublin under the banner, Erin cordially welcomes the Empress. Being an Empress, Elizabeth took over the entire house, allowing Lord Longford to remain as her guest. A room was made into a Catholic chapel. The Empress hunted often in England and with her 12 hunters were brought to Ireland. Apparently Middleton killed three of them trying to get them used to the notorious Irish ditches. The Empress, on the other hand, adapted quickly to the local style of hunting and the Irish scene. A favourite horse was called St. Patrick and she owned an Irish wolfhound called Shadow, wore a sprig of shamrock on St. Patrick's Day. On different days she rode with the Ward Union, Meath and Kildare Foxhounds. Not only the local gentry, but also notable guests from England joined her, such as the Lord and Lady Randolph Churchill, the parents of Winston. There was a dress code on the hunting field which varied from area to area, but in general married ladies wore black with a silk hat and veil, while single ladies were in navy and wore bowler hats. Meanwhile, Cece's hunting activities caused a great stir and she was followed with keen interest by the local national press. For example, on March 4th, 1879, the Irish Times reported, The Empress riding Mr. Murrow's famous Mount Ward Union, now more famous than ever, was in front from find to finish. And one of the brightest days in the annals of the hunt was wound up by an imperial luncheon to which all hunting men were bidden. It was said that she looked like an angel and rode like the devil. People came out in droves, on foot and on horseback to see her. Every ditch and hedge she jumped was crowded with spectators. In one case, up to 500 horsemen showed up to watch her. The locals were impressed by her lack of ostentation and her prowess as a horsewoman. 
So side saddle riding was not just to preserve a females. I was once involved in a project to restore an old side saddle found in an old country house. When the saddler opened its panels, the owner's name was found it belonged to a Mr. Creighton. The saddle had been made in the 1920s and many men who had leg injuries or amputations in the Great War were known to have hunted in side saddles. So Mr. Creighton was probably one of these men. But Sisi's stay in Ireland brought political tensions to the fore. The Lord Lieutenant Marlborough expressed grave concern at the enthusiasm with which she was greeted. Here, after all, were crowds of Catholic peasants cheering a Catholic empress, representing an empire that could claim continuity from the first Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne. The Nationalist press warmly welcomed her, stressing that this empress was at home among the Irish people. Her husband, Franz Joseph, was not too happy either when he heard reports about the kind of risks she was taking. Hunting in Ireland was pretty wild and the Empress did not hold back. She once led a hunt at full tilt for 40 minutes. On another occasion, she was thrown from her horse, but immediately remounted to the delight of the spectators. <clears throat> There's a famous picture of Cece out hunting. Just as the photographer went to take the shot, she flicked the fan in front of her face perhaps making it the first paparazzi photograph. The actual photo belongs to Getty Images and I currently make nothing from these videos so to use that would have cost me 120 euros. So all I can do now is provide a link to this photograph in the description which is really worth having a look at. She had purchased some Irish hunters and left her English horses with the intention of returning, which she did the following year of 1880. Here while out hunting, the hunt passed Ferry House Racecourse and she insisted on jumping all its fences. It was her intention to return in 1881, but the British made it clear that she would not be welcome. Bad harvests in 1879 had caused hardship, resulting in widespread evictions. The government feared that her presence might inflame the situation. Her visits to Ireland had taken on the appearance of near state visits, and the enthusiasm for Elizabeth was seen as an enthusiasm for a Catholic imperial monarchy, at a time when the popularity of Queen Victoria was in decline in Britain. I always want to be on the move, CC reportedly said. Every ship I see sailing away fills me with the greatest desire to be on it. She did not return to Ireland again but left an indelible impression. It was said it was the happiest time of her life. The Empress is remembered in folklore wherever she hunted and a portrait of her riding side saddle on her horse Mary Andrew hangs in the Royal Dublin Society. In Austria her visit is commemorated in the Coach Museum at the Schobrunn Palace where the paintings of her Irish hunters and of her Irish wolfhound Shadow are hung. In September 1898, Sisi was staying on the shore of Lake Geneva in Switzerland when out walking she was attacked and stabbed by a 25 year old Italian anarchist who wanted to simply kill a royal. She died shortly afterwards. Although she had lived a privileged life to us, she had lost two of her three children in her lifetime. Her daughter Sophie when she was two and her 31 year old son Rudolf died in a murder suicide. In the early 20th century it became socially acceptable for women to ride astride wearing breeches and side saddles fell out of use for decades. Do you really like riding like that? When a side saddle is so much more graceful and so much more dangerous. And Lady Mary makes a good point as today modern riders wear an apron that gives the impression it is a skirt but for safety is open at the back. This was because there had been some terrible accidents of ladies being caught with their skirts during falls when male riders would have been thrown clear. But it is said that the daughters of the old side saddle riders began to find saddles like this in attics and in the 1970s the art of side saddle as it is sometimes known came back into vogue. Sisi once declared that her wish would be to quote travel the world over until I drown and I'm forgotten. What follows is some of my footage of a side saddle competition in Ireland that I was involved in. And so I dedicate this clip to the memory of Sisi and to the fantastic ladies who still pursue the art of side saddle. Okay, let's go, 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 somebody go. Stay together. 